Hi, thanks for joining me today on the show. What I wanted to do today was to really explain the purpose of the very shows that we're going to be producing to see, well, basically for you to, to, to see whether it's worth your while to actually come and visit the rest of the shows that we produce. The purpose of the episodes we're producing is to explain to individuals how to regain their health and how to avoid chronic diseases. Now you read a lot about that in papers and in magazines and so on and one of the difficulties I think or one of the problems has been that there's a lot of fluffy advice that we're given. You know you open up the paper and suddenly you read that you know seven things you should do to improve your health or avoid diabetes and it's the classic you know eat more fruit, eat more vegetables, get some sunshine, get some exercise, drink more water and after a while you sort of say yeah well I'm doing all of those things but nothing's working and so what I want to do is I want to take you below the obvious into the science as to why things happen or into the the business factors that drive the, the, uh, the issues of health and chronic diseases because if you understand the underlying aspects of all of these sort of things then you'll know how to avoid them and how to fix them but if you don't then you'll just continue reading the fluffy stuff and ending up confused as a lot of people are. One of the other areas of confusion is I know on um, on the uh, the web there's places like Quack Watch, uh, where Stephen Baird runs that, you know there's a really very poor uh, websites like that that put disgrace on uh, very good practitioners in alternative medicine fields like Chinese medicine, acupuncture and a whole range of others who are really quite brilliant practitioners um, but again uh, people get confused by reading about these particular practices in quack watch and getting a negative view and thinking well maybe they should go back to see their doctor and they end up in this continuous loop of taking medications and never regaining their health. Even this week I ran into someone who uh, a very senior person in business and uh, asked me my view on uh, on Chinese health because she had uh, had asthma for many years. She's a, a mother around about 40 years of age and had suffered from asthma. Went from doctor to doctor uh, and at the end uh, was recommended to see a, 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 a Chinese um, acupuncture practitioner here in Melbourne. A pretty quirky kind of a guy um, and, and yet uh, he cured her of her asthma. She asked my view and I said, listen, you know, there's a lot of things that a lot of people don't understand, but what I can say is that, you know, there are times when you should find a really good healer like that, someone who's, you know, got as much training as any other medical doctor, but it's in a different science, um, and often that's where we see the cure. So I think we need to have an open mind to the various practitioners, uh, and we'll touch upon that on the way through. For today, just so that we've got some reason for being here as well, I wanted to touch on the question of, say, uh, should you drink milk and should it be low fat or normal milk? And the reason I want to talk about that today is because it highlights some of the underlying factors that drive knowledge and if you understand those underlying factors, then I think you'll find that it's a lot that you and your family can do in regaining your health. Okay? If, I, if we look at milk. For example, we have two cartons of milk in Australia. These are, are one liter containers. Um, and most people would buy low fat milk. So if you went to the supermarket, bought a couple of liters of milk, most people would end up with, with a no fat, low fat version of these um, containers. Why? Well, because we're all told that, you know, fat's bad for us and we should drink low fat. And we're going to have some sessions on that because I'm going to show you the dangers of, of, the, of a low fat diet. But what drives this, you know, is, is that the, there's a lot of good people out there all trying to help us to with our health? Is that the rationale as to why we're being told to drink low fat? Or is there another reason? Well, in another session I'll explain to you why low fat's not an issue and why normal fat is what you should be drinking. The ones that we buy here in our home are, are full fat milk. However, if this was low fat milk, the beauty of it from a commercial point of view is if you were a dairy or if you were a, a milk manufacturer, that by selling the consumer these two containers of no fat milk you could then extract the butter fat and produce one of these containers of cream and if you think about it at the supermarket I don't know about you but if I go in and buy these two or I go in and buy these three the price is very different 
So really, if you look at it, you have to say, well, why is a low fat thing being driven so hard by the dairy food industry? Well, there's a lot more money in selling it this way um, than it is to, to sell it that way. Um, so I, I just wanted to make the point that, you know, um, in summary, as we go through these shows, I'm going to explain to you why some of the things are the way they are, why they're promoted, um, so that you can then make up your own mind as to what you want to do. Okay, see you at the next show.